Hey everyone, I'm Chef Mike Scipione here representing Cento Foods. Today we're going to do a lemon oregano pan roasted swordfish. We're going to keep the recipe nice and light and healthy. Summertime's common, everybody wants to shed a little extra pounds. Maybe you haven't been as mobile lately, but we're going to get right to it. We're going to start with a four ounce piece of swordfish and we're going to season with some sea salt, some black pepper. I like it hot, so we're going to do a little bit of red pepper some oregano and every ingredient in this dish is primarily Cento Foods from Cento Foods so let's go over here with a hot pan get it nice and warm we're gonna start with some extra virgin olive oil now my pans already been on warming up so you don't really need a lot about a tablespoon or so and the next thing we're going to do that pan up a little bit we're gonna zest a lemon directly over the top. Zesting the lemon is gonna take out some pectins. Some of the pectins in any citrus fruit are proven to help lower cholesterol, not at an extreme late rate, but it also is gonna give you that lemon flavor without giving you the bitterness. So if you just have your microplane and just let it go right over the top. And you don't need a lot. So we're gonna start right there. Get that zest on there. Pan is primarily hot. We're gonna put it presentation side down. So season side down, right directly in the pan. It's gonna get a little sizzle. And we're gonna keep it there for about two and a half to three minutes on a medium high. So the next thing we're gonna do is go back to the cutting board. And we're gonna get some Gata olives, Cento of course. Want to dice a little more than a handful. And also some capers. This is a really nice dish. It's going to lighten up with a little bit of citrus at the end. Get that salty flavor to go right over that to complement that swordfish. So as this swordfish is going, in the back here I have some Cento vegetable stock that I have on a warmer. And you always want to keep your liquid hot. This way when it hits the pan it doesn't stop the cooking process of the food that's already in there or slow it down. So already prepared I have one uh, large shallot which you can add right into the pan. We're going to make this a one pan meal, which everybody wants to do. Who wants to clean up dishes? I certainly don't. I'm going to add a little bit of salt over the shallots to sweat it out. Just get those shallots in there. Coat them a little bit of oil. And next we're going to come back to our chopped mix of the Kalamata olives and the capers. Now, if you notice, I'm probably not going to put in any more salt because the natural salt of the Kalamata olives and the capers are probably going to be enough to actually bring this dish together with your seasoning. So as that's working itself around, flavors coming together. Now you're going to see the swordfish you're going to see some of the fat starting to come out of the bottom. I don't like cooking swordfish really high. I kind of keep it low. You'll get a little golden brown and give it a nice flip when that fat starts to emerge from the side. Next thing we're going to do is use our San Marzano tomatoes. About a cup or so. Let that work itself around. All this time while you're sauteing your vegetables, your swordfish is still cooking. Let those flavors meld together. And next thing we're gonna do is add some cannellini beans. Cannellini beans is a great alternative to just pasta if you're looking to lighten the, uh, lighten the calories up for the summertime. They're about one quarter of the amount of calories as pasta and you're still getting a low glycemic carbohydrate. These are great for someone who has blood sugar issues. It's going to help lower your blood sugar levels. 
They're loaded with a ton of fiber. Next thing we're going to do while those beans are in there, we're going to get our vegetable stock while it's already boiling and add it right to the pan. Just about a cup or so. And if you see, it's continuing to cook. So here's where I like to add a little bit more crushed red. And then you need the repeat flavors. So we're going to go in with a little bit more oregano. Back over to the citrus. Like I said, repeat flavors. Zest directly into the pan. This way those lemon oils absorb right into your sauce. I like a lot of lemon, so let that come together a bit. Swordfish is looking nice. Okay, so the swordfish has been going for a total of about five minutes now. It is definitely done. I'm going to take it out to make it rest so it doesn't dry out. And then what I'm going to do is get a handful of baby spinach. Most people at this time, or most chefs, or when people are cooking at home, like to make this part where they add in the fresh flat leaf parsley. Nothing against parsley. I just try to get a little bit more nutrition in there by using a fresh leafy green. Arugula would go great in here. There's other alternatives to this dish. This is a great vegetarian dish. You could also throw in some walnuts if you like. You could prepare this dish with chicken. Everything would be exactly the same. The ingredients, obviously you would cook the chicken a little bit longer than you would the swordfish. Everything's coming to a boil. It's pretty much ready to go at this point. So now we're just going to begin to plate. And I'm just going to top it off with the sauce. It's a nice, simple, beautiful dish. Great presentation. So now what we're going to do to finish off the presentation, we're just going to, again, repeat flavors with a little bit of lemon juice over the top. And one last time with just a little bit more of the Cento olive oil, just a touch over the top because swordfish is kind of a dry fish if you overcook it, and that's going to help retain the moisture at the end. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Thank you for watching. Look for our products in the supermarket. For more availability of anything that you may not be able to find, you can always go to Cento.com.